you're doing a wheelie at 140 mile an hour. Fast, isn't it? So we've finally got the new GSX 1400 supercharger kit complete and it's on the bike and we're about to put it on the dyno and see what she does. Look at this beautiful, beautiful black atom anodized finish. Titanium uh, banjo bolts for the oil lines so they won't corrode. The plenum chambers uh, in there, pipes from the supercharger straight into the plenum chamber, air filters on this side, so we've got nice air filter going straight through behind the block, catching nice cold air off the, off the front, um, yeah it'd be interesting to see what she does. So all these parts are now in stock and uh, we're now filling back orders. Uh, but obviously we want to see what she does first to give our customers the best uh, knowledge and information for when they fit their kits. Uh, but we're looking looking for some nice horsepower from this today. See what see what happens. Watch this space. Right, so we've got the bike on the dyno. Just done the very first initial run with everything left as it was before. So it's got a dyno jet power commander on it. I've left the map in as it was, um, done absolutely no changes, but we've got the supercharger on there pushing a load more air. So I just wanted to see how far we could go with the injectors as they were to give me a, an indication of what I've got to do next. Um, and it's pretty obvious she's going to make a lot of power because she started leaning out about 4,000 revs as I expected. So uh, we've got here. This is the original horsepower. So she was making 116 brake. She hit the limiter at 9,000 RPM and it made 75 foot pound of torque. Now straight away, we've got the supercharged horsepower. Initially, as soon as I got on the throttle, we are making more power. And by the time she started to lean out, we're making 90 horsepower and we're making a hundred foot pound of torque at four and a half thousand reps. So we're already up 30% in torque and we're a million miles away from having a decent map in the bike. So the next thing to do is start mapping it and see if we can get all the horsepower with this setup with the stock injectors. If the stock injectors are not man enough, then we'll take them out, we'll decap them, put them back in and start again. But I don't know how much headroom is in the injectors. Let's see if there's enough headroom to get a full, full, full RPM, full throttle. So that's where we're going next. Okay. Right, so we're working the Power Commander 5. And all I'm doing initially is 80 and 100% throttle, because that's what I'm starting with to make sure that if I run full throttle, full uh, RPM, that we've got enough injector duty cycle. If we haven't, then we have to change the injectors. So I've literally just added more and more fuel all the way up just blocks of two or three uh, RPMs and then stepped up again. It's just get us in the ballpark, see where we're going. From there, we can understand a little bit more. So that's the next setup. Here we go. Okay, so I've added as much fuel as we can. We're now hitting 100% duty cycle at less than 6,000 revs. So we're going to have to put bigger injectors in. But look where we are at the moment. So Red Run was stock bike, 115 horsepower. 160, uh, yeah, where are we? Um, run 3, 116.6 horsepower, 75 foot pound of torque. Run four was that very first pull with no changes and we stopped here, look, because we we're going to lean out too bad. A little bit of wheel spin, put a bump in it there. I don't think that's real horsepower. I think that's a little bit of wheel spin on the wet, wet tire when we first run it up. So we're running around here. Um, so that gave us 90 horsepower, 100 foot-pound of torque. 
And then, I, as you saw, I've added more fuel. It gave us enough fuel to go all the way up to about 6,000 revs. Um, at 6,000 revs, run seven, 128 horsepower and 109 foot-pound of torque already. So, although <laughs> we're a long way from anywhere close, we're already making huge gains. Look at that, that's horsepower gain from there to there. So we've gone from 90 horsepower, um, a stock, I said that's about 90 horsepower. Let's, uh, let's look at this accurately. There we go. Um, 6,000 rems, 120 horsepower, 128 horsepower, although it was leaning right out, um, as opposed to 88. So already we're up 60% in horsepower at 6,000 rems. That's pretty crackers. And we're up from 75 foot pound of torque to 110 foot pound of torque, which is 35, 35 foot pound of torque on 75 horsepower. So again, around a 60% increase in torque. She's going to be great, even without cams. This is this is just the stock motor, and the exhaust system is only um, a slip-on with two, a two-inch exhaust pipe. So it's not a, the best exhaust pipe in the world. Already, we're getting tremendous power. So now we have to take the injectors out, see if we can decap them. If we can decap them and get more flow through, uh, we'll get them back on the bike later today. Okay, so we know the injectors are maxing out at around five and a half thousand revs. So we're going to have a look at decapping them. So this is where I take the stock injector. This is the injector that one of the injectors we've taken out. We've got four little tiny pintle holes there, and that atomizes the fuel. Underneath there is a ball, which is the main pintle, and the fuel comes out of that, and these little four holes really restrict the flow. So if I can get rid of those four holes, we'll probably increase the flow significantly. So the way I do that, I nip these up in the lathe, uh, sorry, in the vise on my mill, on my good old trusty bridge fork, and we've got the, one of the other ones in here. So I just come down on, on that, and I keep nibbling away at it. Okay. Yeah, so I come down with a carbide four mil cutter, and I just whisker away at this steel disc on the top until I see the pins underneath. And there she is. So you can now see the difference. And with a bit of luck, without having to change injectors, just by doing this little mod, we should have enough fuel to give it all the horsepower we can get out of the thing. Let's have a look and see what the flow difference is on the flow test. Walk this way. So I've already done one of these. So we've got um, standard injector here and the decapped injector here. So by closing that off, we'll fire it up. There they go. That's when that four bar fuel pressure. And I normally give it about 15 seconds. There we go. And what have we got? Ah, we've got 33cc there, and we've got 61cc there. So it's almost double the flow. Should be about on the money. Just do the other two, and we'll reassemble. Okay, so we've got some pretty impressive results considering uh, that it's still standard cams and the exhaust system is not a full system, it's just a slip-on. 
and it's a bit of a pea shooter, it's only two inch bore. So this is your standard horsepower as this same bike came in. And this is your standard torque. So a lovely flat line of torque. Very, that's why it's such a lovely bike to ride. So we had uh, 75 foot pounds of torque and 116 horsepower. That's how she came in. Now we're running, this is new torque level. So we're up here all the way through. Again, it's lovely flat line. And we've got a little bit of a problem. Clutch is just about hanging on. You'll see the clutch is just about <laughs> gripping. Now it's a stock clutch. We haven't even put stronger springs in. So stronger springs is what's needed and that'll get rid of this waviness at the top end where you know we're just eating, eating peak torque and then it's sort of just struggling to hang on. Um, but we're looking at that, we've got 117 foot-pound of torque up from 75 and 178 horsepower up from 116. These are monstrous gains for a stock motor. It really is strong. So we're running just on 10 pound of boost. Um, now people might ask, and people might ask, uh, what are you doing for ignition timing? Well, when we made the ignition trigger wheel to take the uh, drive char uh, the crank drive pulley, we made the uh, locating dowel slot in the back of the ignition trigger six degrees more retarded than the factory one. So this engine is running ignition timing that is six degrees less at any point then it would be a standard. So it's a low compression motor from stock, they're only nine to one compression. We've got the ignition retarded, all we need is the power commander to do the fuel and it keeps it simple. And this baby is running so well with it. I've given it a good caning this afternoon. We've been running for what, Davey, three, three and a half hours, four yeah, hours? easily that, yeah. Um, and she's hung on a treat. Like I say, the injectors are too big. I'm going to see if I can find some injectors that may work better uh, with asset better atomization and only be something like 50% bigger than stock. And that might give us a few more horsepower. So stronger clutch springs, because we're looking close to 180 horsepower, 178.87 horsepower, um, which is pretty terrific. Then we've got the cams to go in. So we get the cams in there. I think we're going to see over 200 horsepower and probably over 120 foot pound of torque. She's going to be some beastie. So if you want one, put your order in now. We've got all the parts in stock with, on the CNC side. We fabricate the plenum and pipe work to suit for every order. So get your order in now and don't be disappointed.